All right, we have our brand new Fent Ideal 9 out here cutting some grain. We're just doing a little bit of calibration today to get everything running right. So it looks like it's doing a pretty good job to me. All right, well, he just got full, so he is now dumping into the, the cart. So we're just calibrating today. We're not gonna cut a whole lot. There's still some green patches in this field, but it seems to be working pretty good. We're just following them in a truck. Combines over there, we just stopped. We're checking to see if there's any grain loss. We haven't really found much yet, so it seems to be doing pretty good. Just looking for kernels. Where we would have them the most would be in the windrow. So that's why we're kind of going right here. For small grain, it's 19 berries per square foot is a bushel of wall. So if you have 19 kernels per square foot on the ground, then you're losing a bushel per acre. And we're not even finding more than maybe two or three. Seems to be doing pretty good to me. So they're going up there to get a grain sample. There's a little door right there. They're going to get a grain sample so we can take it in and get the moisture checked because we're, there's still a few patches of, of green out here and we're not sure what the moisture is going to be. The, the combine said it was between 11 and 13, so if that's the case, it's pretty good. So we're going to get it sampled and tested. And then Craig's over here, he's, he's getting a sample out of the grain cart. But we're going to get it tested and see when we could possibly go we think maybe in a few more days it'll be ready but it looks a little bit green still this thing sounds like a jet taking off when he revs it up i gotta watch out that header is so big big windrow even with the grain only being not very tall well we're just doing a little bit of calibration today but because I do a lot of the filming and then Trevor and Christopher both do some filming we have a bunch of clips from a few weeks ago a month ago that I really couldn't make a whole video out of it but they're pretty cool clips so Here's a clip of uh, Christopher getting the baler stuck in a field. So check this out. Christopher found himself a mud hole. So I'm here in the big tractor. We're gonna get him pulled out hopefully. Yeah, he got her stuck pretty good. Unfortunately, now we have YouTube. Nobody's shame stays off the internet. Well, today is just gonna be one of those days. I had blowouts on solid set. We just blew this tire off pulling it out. It's just one of those days that everything's going to take 10 times longer than it should. And now we have a clip of when they were pulling all of the rotten potatoes out of the cellar that we couldn't clean. We had to get an excavator in there and then we had to go dump them out in the field. We lost about 10,000 sacks. So here's some clips of them getting the, 
the potatoes out of the cellar and what the inside of the cellar actually looks like. As you can see, we've got the majority of the cellar cleaned out now. Just pretty much scraping up all the slop down to the bottom. We're hauling some sand in here so we can build the road in. So we hopefully can get a little bit more of this that slop over here. So Josh and the loader can get a little bit more out. But all we got left, pretty much, is that little bit of a pile there. So it's not too bad. It's coming along. Well, here's where we're dumping it. We got a spot. This is normally where we'll stack. We'd stack pipe in the winter. But we're dumping it here so it can kind of dry out a little bit. That's what we've hauled out so far. Not sure how many sacks it is. Don't know how many we all did, so it's hard to tell. But uh, once this is dried out a little bit more this summer, this fall, we'll load it up and mix it with the manure and haul it on the fields for fertilizer. Hey guys, give you a little update on what we're doing here. We had a little mishap yesterday when we were done. Um, truck tipped over here. Thankfully, nobody was hurt other than the truck. But. Uh, kind of snapped the frame and broke a whole bunch of stuff so yeah but thankfully nobody was hurt we'll see what the insurance says about the truck but it broke that and broke the ram right off so this will be a fun fix so here's a couple clips that Trevor took where one of them he's happened to have some pivot problems changing a gearbox. Uh, another one he's moving the AC unit from one cellar to another cellar. And the other one he is raking some hay for bailing. Well everybody, we're out here in a lovely, oh it's 96 degrees out here and we got a little bit of a problem. We had to put a gearbox on here. The old one, it broke off right here. So, but the problem is, if you'll notice right here, that nut, we've tried beating it off with an impact. It won't come off. The stud is just spinning. So, sent somebody back to the shop's gonna bring out a cutting wheel for my grinder because we the other one was broke. And we'll have to cut that stud out so we can get this tire back off and on the pivot so we can get her going. But, yeah, fun times out here today. But, thankfully, nice thunderstorms rolling in on me, so maybe it'll cool off here in a minute. Well, we're over here in our cellars with this Sunbelt rental we got. That cellar, you can see right there, is just about empty. They've got uh, probably 10... 10, 11 truckloads left in there. So we pulled all the tubes. So now the that whole air conditioning unit there is running into this cellar. And we're at 67.6 degrees right now and we'll see if we can get it to drop. Well, it looks like the air conditioning is helping. As you can see, it's 68 degrees in the cellar. But the outside air temperature, that's how hot it is outside. So that's pretty good considering how warm it is. Hey guys, we're out here with our second crop hay on this new seeding. I'm out here raking it. You'll see the row here. We got a little bit of a, a lot of heavy dew and a little bit of possibly rain. So the bottom of our hay isn't drying like it should. So you can see we're only using half the rake. Because we raked it into windrows already. Open we were hoping to bail, but we bailed a couple bales and they were too wet. So now the rows are too far apart to use both sides of the rake. So all I'm doing here, as you can see, driving real close to this windrow, and then we're just flipping it over. And you can see how it goes from that tan color to a nice green. Hopefully, we can get it to dry out today and maybe bale it in the morning will do so we can get some good hay bales. Now we have a few clips. We had a drone come out and do some spraying for us. So we have a few clips of the drone spraying. So check this out. It's pretty cool to watch. All right, we're just out here getting ready to watch our drone guy 
Uh, he's spraying for some weeds in the potatoes. Uh, he's just up there on the top of his trailer. There's two drones on the trailer. I think he's just gonna fly one right now because he's only spraying like 30 acres in this field. But there he is set up up on top of the, the trailer with the spray rig. I think he's gonna be starting up the drone here in a second. Now what he's doing, he's filling up the drone with fertilizer or with the spray that he's got to spray on the field. Probably just takes him a little bit to fill up the tank. I can't remember, I think it's like 18 gallon or something like that, if I remember right. Flies at 12 feet off the ground. It's going to spray that way. It is spraying. Turns around, comes back. Okay, we have a couple more clips here that Trevor took when we had a, a pump to water the field go out. And we had to pull the pump out. This was earlier in the year before the potatoes had even broke through the ground. So check this out. This is how we have to pull pumps out with the backhoe. Well guys, we had a little problem. One of our pumps went down. We had to set this new pump on. The other one's laying over there on the other side of the truck. I can't quite see it, but... Yeah, this has been fun trying to get everything lined up and getting this new pump lined up. Hopefully the electrician can make it out today and uh, get the pump wired up so we can get it going because we got to get the spray watered on these spud fields right here. So We'll see what happens. Here's the old pump we took off. That's what it kind of looks like when it's out of the sump. This one's a 30 horse, the other one's a 40, so hopefully it'll give us a little better pressure and it'll work out. Okay, well I'm in the grain cart tractor now. He's way down there, but his, his light started blinking he's got a pretty heaping pile of grain. So I've got the grain cart and we're going to go down there and let him empty so he can make it back to the other end because I, I don't know that he would make it because that 40 foot head really harvests a lot of grain. So we'll go, uh, we'll go dump him. All right, Let's see if I can do this one handed because I'm, uh, I'm filming. So I'll pull up next to him here. There's a huge wad that I have to drive over. Hopefully it doesn't get plugged up underneath something. Slow down a little bit. Next to him here. Just drove over that wad and it didn't plug up anything, so. Got 
gonna slow her down. There we go. Getting her done now, man. This combine is nice. It leaves this, the head, because the header is so wide, it leaves a nice wide spot for me to drive this down where I don't even have to drive over the windrows. Our old one had a 30 foot header and I had to drive on top of the windrows because it just wasn't wide enough. But yeah, this one is real nice. And it's supposed to be able to unload that whole bin in like a minute or something like that. 90 seconds maybe. Pretty fast. Our old one, man, it was slow. I'd be parked here for like five minutes just trying to wait for the the bin to unload and it was half the size. So but because this bin is twice the size, I cannot hold as much. So I can only hold about two dumps from the combine before I have to dump it into a semi. So this cart is full and we don't have any semis because we weren't really planning on starting today. So we're just going to see, we gotta go check the, the moisture level and then we'll see if we could start today, maybe we'll start tomorrow. But today we were just mainly calibrating everything. But that combine is nice. Oh, I'm going, slowing down a little too much. All right, well, he's folding his arm in. So I'm just gonna drive to the end here. That is a nice combine. Draper header. It's got belts on the belts on the header, so it just kind of feeds it in with belts to the middle. So all the grain just falls on those belts, and then it feeds it to the center. It's a nice combine. The fact that it can take that much grain is kind of crazy. But he said that on the on the ideal tens. They make a 60 foot header for that one. Like, it has quite a bit more horsepower than this one, but that is crazy. A 60 foot grain header, that would be insane. But I guess somebody's out there using it. some learning curves here. We keep plugging up the header. It just feeds too much in all at once. Then we have to stop, push it back out. It is feeding though. It's not plugged up inside. It's just plugged the header up. So we're, we're getting it. It's a new machine. We're still learning how to use it. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video of us calibrating this and then those few extra clips in there. Um, we did get the grain test back. The grain is ready, but we're not. We don't have trucks. We're not. We're not quite ready to go yet. And there's also there's a few pretty green strips out here through the field. So we've got this all open. We're just going over where all the grease points are and whatnot with the with the Fenton guys while they're here. And uh, yeah, next video coming up grain harvest. So look forward to that. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.